Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to this episode of The Determined Mom Show. I am your host, Amanda Tento, and I have the amazing Mel Daniels here. She is a content coach and strategist. And today we are going to talk about how to create powerful content to stand out from the crowd. Welcome, Mel. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda. It's such an honor to be here. I'm very excited that we were able to arrange this because I know our time zones are so different, but I appreciate you getting up at the crack of dawn to record this with me on a whole different day, whole different calendar day. We're in two different calendar days now. I appreciate that greatly. And I would love to hear about you, how you became a content strategist, and then we'll go ahead and talk about how to create this amazing content. Thank you so much, Amanda. My journey has been such an interesting one, as it usually is on this entrepreneurial journey. I started six years ago as a virtual assistant, and I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because I never really had any thoughts of being an entrepreneur or having my own business. I never had any role models. I never even knew it was really a possibility. I was really taught and encouraged to do well at school go to university, have the amazing corporate role, all of which I did and I loved as well. Things change throughout your life. You're thrown interesting curveballs and your journey takes paths that you just don't expect. I had an amazing corporate role and I loved it. I loved the people. I loved the culture. I loved the opportunities. And I did get to do such a wide range of things. And when I had my first child, I fully expected that I would be going back to work at some stage. Probably after about 12 months, I could see myself going back into that space, making it all work and really enjoying it as well. But like I said, the universe threw us a curveball and my husband was offered a job halfway around the world in London. And so we up and left and took our six month old at the time to London and started a new life there. So unfortunately, I had to leave my job. I had to resign. And it was such a really sad day for me because I loved it so much. And I thought to myself that perhaps I'd never get a chance to go back to that particular role. And I had to resign because we were going to be away for an indefinite period of time. They weren't prepared to keep my job open for an indefinite period of time, which is understandable. I threw myself into mom life and once again, just loved it. I'm the type of person who loves a challenge, who really embraces change and being a full-time mom was just amazing and so rewarding. And I ended up having my second child over there in London, away from family. It was a really, really tough time, but a really fantastic time as well. We got to meet so many new people, make new friends. And eventually we came back to Australia, to Sydney in Australia. And I still loved being a mum. I still loved mum life. But as your children get to an age where they don't need you every day anymore, they don't need you to decide what they're going to wear or necessarily help feed them breakfast, they can start doing these things themselves. Obviously, they needed me less and less. It was a decision of what do I do next? What do I do for me? And what do I do for my family as well? Because family was really important to me at that time and still is. And I couldn't see myself going back into that corporate space, even though I had loved it so much at the time, I couldn't see how it would now fit into my life because my life had changed. I had changed. My values had changed as well. That's when I decided to start my own business. And I had no idea what I was going to do, Amanda. I had no idea. I think at one stage I was going to bake and decorate cakes. I ended up landing on becoming a virtual assistant and that has morphed into being the content strategist I am today because I just love content so much and could see so many women in that space using content in a way that wasn't strategic and wasn't powerful. They knew they needed to use it in their business, but they didn't need, they didn't necessarily know how to use it with strategy and purpose. I love that. That's an amazing story. It's very similar 
to a lot of our moms. It's just like this roller coaster of, okay, this is what's happening now. This is what we're going to do. This is what's happening now. This is what we're going to do. And then you eventually come to that point where you happen upon what you're passionate about, which I think is so important that we actually just seek that out and that we allow ourselves that time as we're becoming mothers, as we're, you know, having more children to really figure out what that looks like. I love that story. And like you said, it is that roller coaster and I'm still on that roller coaster. I do not know where this entrepreneurial journey will take me next. And that is the most exciting thing. Yes, I am too. I feel like every day something like a new opportunity or a new door opens and then you're like, why not try it? Who knows what's going to what's going to happen? I agree completely. Tell us about what we can do to create this powerful content and help us to stand out from all of our peers or competitors or millions and millions of other things in the feed and blogs and whatever. How can we stand out? There is so much content out there, isn't there, Amanda? And the, yeah, we have a real challenge to differentiate ourselves from everyone else. And then on another level, we need to be able to stand out from everyone else so that our content gets consumed and we can take our ideal client on that client journey with us. I really believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's really just up to us how we use it. And I just want the listeners to think about that for a moment because one piece of content could possibly unite a group of people or divide a group of people. One piece of content can inspire two people to collaborate together. One piece of content can go viral and reach hundreds of thousands of people. Never happened to me, but it can happen. No matter what type of content you're actually creating, you're creating that thread of commonality between people, potentially across the globe as well, which is amazing that we can reach so many people so far away from us just with that power of content. If our content is actually going to be powerful, we need to be mindful of the way that we're using it. And when we create it and use it with purpose, mindful of that person that is on the other end of that piece of content who's actually consuming it, and most importantly, the way in a way that feels really easy and aligned with you, then that's when our content becomes powerful. There's that two sides of the story. There is who we're creating it for and being mindful about them. And then there's us, which is, I think, a factor that a lot of people don't think about when they create the content. We're told to constantly think about our ideal client, to really create content that meets them where they are. And 100%, yes, we do. And we will talk about that. But the flip side of that is really honing into who you are as that person. So I guess, Amanda, when we think about how we're going to use the content, so when we're being mindful What are we actually thinking about? We're thinking about whether we're going to use it for good or for evil. That really means, are we going to share it from the heart? Are we going to share content that is authentic and reflects who we are as a person and where we are? Or are we going to use it as a a false perception of the world and a false perception of who you are? I think that really thinking about that, whether you're going to use it for good or for evil can create content that is really resonates with your ideal client. I think that as consumers, we're starting to become a little bit more discerning and understanding some of the content that's presented to us isn't necessarily a true reflection of the world and we're getting better at picking that up. I think that previously we've accepted everything as the truth or everything as real world. But in and when I'm talking about good versus evil, I'm thinking those moments where People share what amazing lives they're having. Perhaps they're lying on a beach with their laptop type thing. That's not really a reflection, true reflection of where they are and what's happening in their lives and what is possible for everyone else as well, because we need to be mindful of that. That's the first thing. Do we use it for good or are we using it for evil? And now the second thing is, are we using it with purpose or are we contributing to the noise? There is so much content out there. Like you said that, Amanda, that how do we actually break through all of that noise? Because there are just so much clutter out there. We're going to create content for content's sake and continue adding to that noise, confusing our ideal client and just 
we're not being mindful of that digital economy that's out there? Or are we going to create content that has meaning, that has a purpose, that, you know, not only reflects you, but really encourages your ideal client to be a better person or to live a better life as well. And I think that's really important. And then the last thing is, are we going to use our content for impact or are we going to use it for self-promotion? Now, a lot of people say to me, Mel, we need to use content to promote ourselves and 100%. We think about that client journey that we take people on from not knowing anything about us all the way through to becoming a raving fan then yes, content is the means we do that. We take them through different phases. We connect with them. They subscribe to our email list. We nurture them. We convert them. 100% we need to use content to promote what we do in our services. But there's a difference between promotion and self-promotion. It's really about the meaning that we put behind our content and how is it going to impact their lives positively or negatively, but hopefully positively as well. I think they're the three main things when it comes to thinking about your ideal client. Well, not just thinking about our ideal client, but how we are going to use it. How are we going to use this powerful thing that we have at our fingertips? Good versus evil, purpose versus noise, or impact versus self-promotion. Those are great. And one thing that kind of stuck out to me when you were talking about that content, that last portion of the content piece. And of course, I see all things from like an SEO Google kind of standpoint. And I Google in September released a huge update called the helpful content update. And if we all just thought of like making our content helpful, I think that would be like a really good way to start. Just try to provide value and help people and that kind of thing. It just struck me when you said that. I was like, oh, the helpful content update. That's really about the purpose versus noise, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What's the reason I'm creating the content versus am I just creating it for content's sake? Exactly. If we have that one little word, helpful, in our vocabulary as we're creating, I think that would help a lot. But I like that. I like yeah. that, Amanda. <laughs> it's Google's idea, not mine. What else can we do? This is going to come from a strategy or channel standpoint. So what is the best channel right now to be creating content on and putting it out there and having it be effective? The best channel to use is the channel, first of all, that your ideal client plays on. And second of all, that you love to do. There is no correct one size fits all answer to that. And I think that when we think about, and sometimes we really, we take on board all the experts out there in content. There's experts in YouTube and experts in podcasting and experts in Instagram and experts in all the things. And if we're listening to what all of them are saying, we can get very confused because obviously they all love their own channels and platforms the most. Right. And so we'd like you you to actually use those. But when we kind of think about blocking out that noise for a second, And just taking on board those pieces of what they're saying that really resonate with us and feel good with us, then that is going to be the key. That is the place where you should be playing. That is the type of content that you should be creating is those that actually resonate with you. That means it might play to your strengths. It might be that you really enjoy doing it. For example, I love writing blogs. For me, that's a really great way to create content. And I have a strategy in place and a process in place to take that, that blog and create lots of smaller pieces of content from it as well. That plays to my strength as well. I love to be process driven and really efficiency driven as well. It kind of comes from my corporate background. But so to answer your question, it's really about where your ideal client is and where you are as well. And that's exactly what powerful content is as well. At the top of the episode, I said that powerful content was a combination of understanding who you're talking to and being really mindful and purposeful about that. But on the flip side, really thinking about you and what you bring to the world and how you like to create content. Because the moment that we do that, the moment that we're doing something that really aligns with us, then we're going to really enjoy doing it. And if we enjoy doing it, we're going to become more consistent. We're more consistent, we become more visible. And if we become more visible, then that is when We become that go-to expert in the field that we're in. It's really this beautiful circle of really coming back to your ideal client and who you are as well. 
And perhaps we can talk to both of those things as well, Amanda. Definitely. I think you're 100% right. There's no one platform for any person. What it just, I was like, it was a baited question. It was a baited question, but I love the answer. And I love how you explain that because if you're creating TikTok videos and your, your ideal client is in their 70s, that's not going to work. Hello. But I think it's a really good point that you bring up that it, you have to make, be mindful of who you're talking to, what your messaging is, what you bring to the table, and then try to center that messaging around to content. When we're thinking about that as well, like I said, we're thinking about our ideal client. You just said that example of the 70-year-old perhaps not being on TikTok, which is 100% <laughs> correct. But when we approach our content from a human perspective, rather than one based on transactions, then that is really when we're going to experience so much more personal and business growth, I believe. And when we're thinking about who we're talking to, who we're communi communicating to with our content, and we're really conscious of that and who they are as a person and where they are in their stage of that client journey with you, then that's when you're going to cre create the most amazing content. Because I think the problem is that most people know who their ideal client is. They could rattle off a whole heap of demographics for you. The problem is though, they're connecting with their ideal client with their head and not with their heart. And there's a big difference. There is a big difference between creating content that's based on transaction or feels robotic or is doing, ticking the boxes rather than something that is really meaningful to both you and your ideal client as well. And sometimes we forget that. We forget that there is actually a human. There's a human being on the end of every single piece of content that we create and that we shouldn't just create that content for content's sake. It's all about creating and forming and nurturing these beautiful relationships with the people out there who are consuming our content. And when I talk about relationships, I don't mean that you have to go and have a one-on-one -on -one relationship and get to know everything about all of the people that you serve. That's just not possible, especially when you're in a one-to-many situation with your services or packages. I'm not saying that, but I'm, what I'm saying is that there is that you need to give your ideal client that opportunity to really connect with you and get to know you. And so then you can go on to nurture and convert them as well. I just want to remind everyone to think about their ideal client for a moment from your heart space rather than your head space. Ooh, that's a really good tip. I think that's one that I struggle with personally because everybody, all of my clients are in like completely different stages of business, which is a weird space to be in to try to market to someone that just started their business and a company that has a thousand locations. And there's a huge spectrum of where my clients are in their business journey. I tend to shy away from that, but I think that's a really good point to, to bring up and I have to figure out how yeah. to address that myself. No, And I think that a lot of people uh, experience that as well, Amanda. They do cater to clients that are on different paths themselves. I really encourage people if they find that they have clients like that to speak to the inspirational, to speak to that top level, because those people starting out, they would love to have a path laid out for them. And if they can see what that inspirational transformation is at the very end, that the people who are further along are actually getting, then that really helps them to get along that path with you as well. So that's the ideal client side of things. But then we also need to think about us as well and just really leaning into who we are as a person because the moment that we try to stop being someone that we think we need to be or someone we think that our ideal client wants us to be then that's when we're going to create the powerful content as well that's really leaning into your values and your core beliefs because once we understand what they are and we start creating content in line with them guess what's going to happen we're going to start attracting people who have very similar values and core beliefs, and then they are going to be the people who are the most easy for us to work with and who really bring us joy when we work with them. And we all have those. We, I'm sure that everyone's had those clients that they love and those clients that they really struggle to get through their service with. And it, you'll find that it's those people that align with your values and core beliefs that are really the ones who are easier to work with. I agree with that 100%. I have an attraction to doulas which is hilarious. I have four 
four clients that are doulas in different, like I have postpartum, I have birth and I have a widow doula as well, which is interesting, like an end of life doula. I'm just very attracted to those types of people. And just, I think that nurturing, uh, it, it's just very interesting because those are the ones that I have the best connection with and I understand their business so much. And it's just very, a very interesting point that you are making and making me open my eyes to my clients and like which mm -hmm. ones I connect with the most and that kind of thing. And if you really can lean into that, whatever it is that connection is, and I'm sure that everyone who's listening will have those clients that they really love working with, that are really easy to work with. Dive a little bit deeper, find out what it is that's really connecting you to them and them to you, and then lean into that because the more beautiful clients that we can have like that, the easier life is and the more joyous this business journey is too. That's a great point. Thank you so much, Mel, for sharing all of this amazing information about content creation and about getting our message across, which is really important. And I know you have a quiz that you'd like to share with the audience that will help them do what? It will help them unlock their content superpowers. So we've just spoken a lot about being you, that there's two sides of that powerful content, the ideal client and the you. And when we not only understand our values and our beliefs, but we understand who we are intrinsically as a person uh, that creates content, then that's really going to help us to lean into our strengths, but also to be aware of our kryptonite. And when we're aware of our kryptonite, it brings that awareness to the things that we should not necessarily avoid because it's part of who we are, but things that we can improve on and make sure that we create content in a way that feels right and easy for us, as well as meets our ideal client where they are. Oh, I love it. That quiz for everyone that's listening is going to be in the show notes. You can go ahead and grab that and take the quiz and figure that out. Thank you so much for being here, Mel. We appreciate you. And so glad that you brought all of this information to us and very grateful for your presence. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Let's face it, piecing together a marketing plan with the things you hear, watch, or read online while tempting is never a good idea. The truth is people don't search on social media for your services. And even if they do, they will still be going to Google to check your ratings. By not having a cohesive, proven marketing system, you are leaking clients and customers through giant holes in your customer acquisition bucket. But let's talk about what else isn't working. Posting tirelessly on social media, tracking followers as a business metric for success, paying for ineffective marketing, buying glossy ads in coupon magazines, spending time replying to comments, Paying others to manage your social media with no actual sales coming in. What is going to work? Having a proven marketing system in place will plug every hole in your bucket and allow you to begin to fill up with new customers and to also retain and nurture your current ones. Go to tdm-marketing forward slash six dash marketing dash musts and download our free guide to six marketing musts guaranteed to get you more customers.